एविडेंस इन फायर आर्म केसेज टूडे वी शल डिस्कस हाउ ए बैलिस्टिक एक्सपर्ट शुड गिव एविडेंस इन द कोर्ट द फर्स्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट दैट रिक्वायर्स फॉर द एविडेंस इज द सेक्शन अंडर विच ही इज गिविंग एविडेंस एविडेंस कैन बी गिवन अंडर सेक्शन फोर्टी फाइव ऑफ इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट वेयर द बैलिस्टिक एक्सपर्ट इज नॉट डिक्लेयर्ड एज ए केमिकल एग्जामिनर बट इफ हिज नोटिफिकेशन इंडिकेट्स दैट ही इज ए केमिकल एग्जामिनर ही इज कवर्ड अंडर सेक्शन टू नाइन्टी थ्री ऑफ सी आर पी सी एंड देयर फोर ही नीड नॉट अटेंड द कोर्ट इन पर्सन बट द कोर्ट कैन डायरेक्ट इट अदरवाइज एंड ही विल हैव टू अटेंड द कोर्ट द सेकेंड पार्ट इज द एक्सपर्ट मस्ट नॉट स्पीक ए लैंग्वेज विच इज नॉट अंडरस्टैंडेबल बाई ए ले मैन ही मस्ट स्पीक इट एट द लेवल ऑफ द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ ए ले मैन ऑल टेक्निकल पॉइंट्स विच ही विश टू ब्रिंग टू द नोटिस ऑफ द कोर्ट सिंस ही इज नॉट ए बॉयस्ड विटनेस ही मस्ट गिव एन इंडिपेंडेंट एंड करेक्ट ओपिनियन टू असिस्ट द कोर्ट बिकॉज ही इज अ नॉट पार्टी ही हैज नो एंट्री विद एनी वन एंड ही इज नॉट ए फ्रेंड ऑफ एनी वन हिज एविडेंस इज इन डीड एन एविडेंस टू असिस्ट द कोर्ट द समाइम्स द कोर्ट इज मिस अंडरस्टूड इन ए पर्टिकुलर केस एन ऑनरेबल कोर्ट आस्क हंड्रेड ऑफ क्वेश्चन टू एन एक्सपर्ट विच वॉज नॉट लाइक बाई द एक्सपर्ट एंड द प्रोसिक्यूशन टुक द मैटर टू द एपलेट कोर्ट the appellate court observed that the judge has every right to ask relevant or irrelevant questions and any number of question to arrive at the truth he presides over a criminal court to find out that no innocent person is punished and at the same time no guilty person should escape the punishment thus it is the duty of the expert to ensure that he gives an unbiased opinion and any number of question asked by the court has to be answered after studying this module you shall be able to know about different types of evidences and their nature blank cartridges and some fatal firearm cases the identification of entrance holes and related firearm evidence it is a well known fact that a wide variety of firearms like shotguns rifles revolvers pistols illegally manufactured firearms are being increasingly used in heinous crimes involving murders tickoities robberies riots and encounters convictions have been awarded and maintained in many cases when they were solely based on firearm basis hence it needs to be collected and interpreted properly firearm evidence can help to decide whether the given incidents is a case of homicide suicide accident or a self defense verify various versions of the witnesses establish the authenticity of the alleged case history determine sequence of events establish the numbers of firearms used in an incident there are several cases when victims of gunshot injuries survive for some time before its death survival period have been recorded for few minutes to few years depending upon the locations of the wound and extent of injury when a victim survives though 
it is of paramount importance to provide him medical attentions and it is almost equally important to collect and document the used firearms and related evidences available either on the body of the victim or elsewhere. Ballistic Evidences Gunpowder Gunpowder is not only used in fireworks but also in muzzle loading gun in India and serves as an evidence of great importance. In a murder trial, the medical witness deposed that blackening around the wound was due to black powder and could not be caused due to smokeless powder. However, this deposition is not correct since both types of powder could cause blackening around the wound, of course with different shades of blackening. The defense argument that gunfire injuries on the person of the victim was caused by a cartridge containing gunpowder as a propellant and the cartridge illegally fired by the accused contained smokeless powder, hence the accused could not be the murderer. This contention resulted in the acquittal of the accused. On an appeal, the High Court withheld the acquittal on the basis of the submission by the ballistic expert that blackening may also be caused by the cartridges containing smokeless powder. Position of Firearm in an interesting alleged suicide case, the firearm was found placed on the right side of the victim, whereas victim was known to be of left-handed. The obvious conclusion is that it could not be a case of suicide. Further investigation revealed this to be a case of homicide. Normally, a person who commits suicide selects a convenient site such as temple, mouth and under the chin. An entry wound on the back of a person would be indicative of a case of homicide as no one committing suicide will select such an unusual site which is not only inconvenient but impracticable also. It is very inconvenient to fire self from middle of backside and almost impossible to do so in a horizontal direction while pressing the weapon uniformly against the back skin and firing the weapon by pressing off trigger. In another case of an alleged murder of a security guard, it was contended that he was killed in point blank range at face by his own 12 bore gunshot. The absence of GSR in the deceased's hands supported the prosecution version. However, the range and other calculations like bare right foot of the deceased, blast injury, presence of GSR on the legs and weapon entangling the body revealed that the security guard killed himself by placing the muzzle under his chin and pulling the trigger by the toe of his right feet as he was depressed because of his family problems. Range of Fire Range of fire is also an important factor deciding the nature of the case. Obviously, a person killing himself will not shoot from far distance. Number of entry and exit wounds holes. Number of entrance holes in the event of firing is usually an indication of the number of rounds that had hit the victim. There may be a situation when a soft nose bullet may get fragmented before entering the body on account of shrinkage porosity. In a homicide case, the deceased was having three entry wounds of sizes 2 cm into 2 cm, 1 cm into 1 cm and 
0.75 cm into 0.75 cm over the left nipple in front of the chest, all enclosed in an area of 5 cm into 5 cm. The claim of shooting the victim thrice was overruled as the post-mortem doctor recovered only one lead core, one jacket and three unevenly fragmented lead pieces. The total weight of these three pieces had been 11 grams approximately which was well within the weight of a 0.315 bullet. In addition to this, this was no implication of any of the ingredient of bullet. Therefore, it was concluded that injuries could have been caused as a result of penetration of different fragments of the same bullet. Evidence in case of non-recovery of weapons. Generally, the weapon used in the crime gets recovered, but it may not happen in every case. In case where weapon is destroyed purposely or disposed of, the recovery of the used firearm may be difficult or impossible. In a particular of murder, the recovery of the firearm could not be made from the suspect. The house of the suspect was searched for the recovery of the firearm, which proved to be a fruitless exercise. However, some fired bullets lodged in a practice board were recovered luckily. Experts could establish similarity between the two sets of bullet, that is, one set consisting of bullets used in the crime and the other set recovered from the house of the suspect. The striation marks and firing pin marks could easily help in matching the bullets. Penetration of shots in different regions of the body. Inference regarding the number of shots fired is drawn usually from the number of areas of impact. Particular caution is required in case of an injury on the palm of a hand which is generally caused as a defense wound as illustrated by a case below. In one case, a victim received an entrance wound of about 4 cm on the palm of his hand with a corresponding exit wound on the back of it. In addition, he had several perforations on the chest region which had spread over it. All these injuries were caused as a result of firing of one round as the man on seeing his adversary with a contrary made pistol pointed towards him from a close range exposed his palm in defense which resulted in on an entrance wound from a close range from to his palm and the shot which got spread after exit through the back of it made multiple wounds in the chest region while he was trying to get up from lying position. Blank cartridges and fatal firearm cases. Blank cartridges are used only for making loud noise. It is generally believed that blank cartridges are incapable of inflicting fatal and grievous injuries because they do not contain projectiles. Blank cartridges, however, can cause fatal and grievous injuries from a close range. The following two cases and many more will clearly prove the incorrectness of this belief. Case 1 A 17 years old boy during practice session of international games died on being hit by the discharge of a blank cartridge fired during the inaugurations. The cap used instead of the real bullet pierced through the soft abdominal cavity, rupturing the vital parts of the body. The gun was fired at very close vicinity, resulting in the unbelievable fatality. Case 2 In London, UK, during a stage performance, the hero fired a blind cartridge through a 12-bore shotgun. The villain died on the spot due to penetration of the wards. 
the wards have pierced his heart causing rupturing and the gaseous materials burn the internal parts causing a tragic end of the show case studies related to firearm injuries case 1 in an alleged suicide case of a teenage girl a complaint was filed contending that the death is a homicidal and not suicidal the weapon was suspected to be a 12 bore shotgun subsequently the body of the deceased which was buried was ordered to be exhumed for second autopsy during the autopsy the assorted lead pellets were recovered which were further compared with the pellets recovered from the possession of the alleged accused the microscopic as well as the spectrographic analysis revealed that both the sets that is one recovered from the body and the other found from the accused were similar furthermore the gun in the possession of the accused had residues of the fired ammunition on the barrel of the gun comparison of pellets with respect to mass and diameter coupled with spectrographic analysis and presence of gun shot residues in the barrel of the accused gun ruled out the suicidal version completely and pointed to the use of accused gun in the alleged homicide case 2 a young medical officer of a government civil hospital died of gun shot under mysterious circumstances in the house of a paralytic patient who was under his treatment for many years when he went to the patient's house after receiving a telephonic request the patient was not found available in the house but his 20 years old son and two daughters were there along with their mother and a maid servant at the time of leaden tragedy according to the family version when the doctor arrived at the night the younger daughter aged 23 years showed him 20 bore shotgun to disclose that she had learned firing of gun the gun went off when the doctor tried to snatch the weapon from her and hit the doctor on the right side for forehead the prosecution however disputed the version of the family and the crime scene was reconstructed to know the actual truth the position of the body with head injury profuse bleeding found in the veranda along with the fact that the remaining part were found in the drawing room where a second gun shot hole had been found in the wall of the drawing room the keys of the doctor's scooter parked out lying close to the body of a couple with other physical evidence completely ruled out the possibility of accidental death based on the circumstantial evidence and ballistic experts opinion the case ended with an award of life sentence to the accused daughter case 3 brian j heard has mentioned an interesting case in his book firearms and ballistics where a police officer had claimed that a suspected drug peddler came running towards him with a knife and that he had no option but to open fire on the contrary a witness said that the police officer grabbed hold of the deceased west pulled his gun towards the victim and then shot him on examination of the vest worn by the deceased it was found that the blood staining round the bullet entry site was too heavy for visual range of the estimations to be carried out by using ir photography it was possible however to completely eliminate the interfering blood staining allowing the sooty discharged residues to be seen reconstruction showed that at the time of firing the range from muzzle to vest was not more than 5 cm and one side of the vest was closer to the gun than the other thus firearm evidence based on powder pattern clarified the position that the witness was speaking the truth case 4 the same author brian j heard has described another case in his book in this case a gang of heavily armed robbers who after robbing a bank of several million dollars became involved in a running shootout through the streets 
one of the culprits shot in the head of a pedestrian moving in a street. The bullet recovered was 0.357 inches magnum round containing lead, barium, antimony, silica and aluminium. This was the only round of 0.357 inches magnum fired during the chase. The rest being 0.38 inches special, none of which containing aluminium. After some time, a number of stained gloves were found on a hillside along with some of the stolen money and guns. GSR found in the cloth material of the gloves which was used to fire the 0.357 inches was found out which of the gun had fired the fatal bullet. Luckily, the glove containing the aluminium on it also had some blood on it which was instrumental in locating the suspect. Case 5 There was firing between police and decoys. The decoys were able to carry body of an injured fella with them after the firing was over. After a couple of days or so, a person got admitted in a nursing home for treatment of fractured arm. His body was subjected to extra examination which showed a presence of a bullet in the body of the injured person. Police was informed and the bullet was subsequently removed from the body and was found to be of 0.38 caliber which is a prohibited bore and mainly used by police. It was thus clear that this bullet could have been fired by police. All the weapons, specifically revolvers, used by police when examined in a forensic lab revealed that the recovered bullet had been fired from one of the revolvers used by police, thereby confirming that the person undergoing the treatment was none else but a decoy. Case 6 a victim surviving gunshot injuries was admitted to a hospital where a bullet lodged in him had been removed. It was of 0 0.32 caliber. The victim had been alleging that his neighbor fired at him, but the investigation revealed that his neighbor was innocent. After some time, the police could lay hands on the real shooter of the recovered bullet from the victim's body on the basis of firearm evidence of similarities of marks of lands and grooves in particular. The real firer who had a .32 caliber revolver in his possession was convicted. Case 7 A person having a .32 revolver with him stood near a pond fired a contact shot on his right temple but did not die immediately and threw the revolver into the pond before returning to his house where he succumbed to the injury. The absence of firearm made the investigator to conclude it to be a case of homicide and thus he felt no necessity of collection of gunshot residues on the hands of the victim. This would not be correct. In this case, there was a heavy deposit of gunshot residues on the web portion of the right hand of victim, indicating self-fired firearm. The bullet recovered from the head of victim was found to be fired from a .32 revolver. Later, some village boys discovered a revolver in the pond while swimming and handed the same to the police. The investigation revealed the revolver belonged to the deceased only and the other evidence confirmed that the bullet recovered from the head of the victim was fired from his revolver recovered from the pond. Case 8 A man returned to his house with bleeding injuries. He fell unconscious and was taken to a hospital where he died after three hours. 
He had gunshots with wounds of entrance below the chin and wound of exit on the left side of frontal bone. No blackening and tattooing around the wound of entrance. However, some particles of propellant were found along the bullet track indicating a contact shot. Since it was a common site for committing suicide, GSR was present on the web portion of right hand. It could be concluded that it was a case of suicide. During further investigation, revolver was recovered from a nearby park. Recovery of revolver and its examination added further strength to the conclusion of suicide. Summary The survival period for a victim of gunshot injury strictly depends upon the extent of injury he she received. That period may be any range of time. Any case of gunshot injury depends upon various factors like range of fire, direction of fire, dimensions of entry and exit wounds, type of firearm, type of ammunition, etc. Apart from the various factors mentioned above, the factors deciding the nature of crime, that is, whether homicide, suicide or accidental can be formulated only by the reconstruction of crime scene. Many times it is observed that the murder weapon of the gunshot crimes is disposed in order to misguide the investigating agency. To overcome this problem, the way out is the identification and comparison of bullets and cartridge cases which are available in the form of standard as well as the crime exhibit.